This is Analog Spectrum, the best and worst parts of podcasting, all rolled into one. Okay, we are on. We are on. Hello, everyone. It's it's actually even though we're putting these on weekly, it's actually been a little while since Doug and I have recorded. This is yeah. This is Tony again, and I'm with Doug. Are you Tony? I am. Wow. Check what? It <laughs> and, and it's a it's another uh, edition of Analog Spectrum. So yeah, uh, this is going to be a good one. I think. I think so. Yeah. I don't know. This this this, this, is, this is going to be interesting. Okay? Yeah, I think so. And and to, to, and before we even get started, I want to make sure everybody understands we are going to talk about two movies. If you haven't seen these movies and you're interested in these movies, we are going to be digging into these movies. Yeah, so, stop now and go watch yeah, them. Yeah, go watch the movies be, and come back. Spoiler alert doesn't uh, even... We're, we're, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you we're know, going we're, to talk about details. Yeah, exactly. And so the two movies are, uh, are Funny Games... Or was it funny? Funny, funny, girl? funny. Oh shit! I watched the wrong funny. one. I watched that damn Woody Allen movie. Girl. I was like, why would he even do this? this <laughs> is such a, I don't even. No. Okay, let me set this up though. <laughs> ha ha! That's good. Joke. So the, the deal is, what we did is Tony and I always we're, we're talking all the time about what can we just put on the podcast, whatever. So um, this time, what we decided is, I would pick a movie for him to watch uh, that I didn't think he had seen, and then we would talk about it, and then the reverse, he would pick one for me. So exactly. I, I picked Funny Games, which is a I believe it was nineteen ninety seven or ninety eight. Yes, sir. Uh, German film german Sub- language film subtitled yeah so uh, yeah we'll talk about that and then he picked for me brawl on cell block 99 2017 vince vaughn yeah with vince vaughn yeah not i had movie. never heard of it right so. and and uh in funny games i i when you first mentioned i was like i don't think i've seen this and then as i watched it i think i was aware of it Okay. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I'd been like, oh, I think I had heard of this, but I, mm-hmm. I had not, I didn't know much about it. It's some, it's, it's, it's famous for its um, unique qualities, I would say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll talk about it. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, uh, and, and interestingly, I think these movies do have certain things in common. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like in, again, which we're going to get into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're both uh, uber violent. Yeah. Right. Serious propensity for violence. Which right. I, I was going to say, I found that really interesting that you sent one, me one of those, and I sent you one of those. Yeah. And it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't, you know, I just, we didn't say, hey, let's pick a violent movie. We just like, eh, it's something you might not have seen. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and, and, uh, and when we were planning this podcast, there wasn't, uh, you know, and we might get into this in a future podcast, but both uh, Doug and I are really busy right now, and so there is not a there's not a lot of deep thought into these topics. We're just kind of like, we need topics. Let's put it out yeah, there. Let's put something out there. And, yeah. and, I, and I and I think this is actually a good thing to do. You know, moving forward, this is a, a excellent uh, podcast format for us to discuss movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, and so. I also find it kind of interesting. I'm gonna. I'm going to, I'm going to, hopefully, I'm going to try not to upset Doug, but one of the things that kind of cracked me up, because I could tell that, that uh, funny games, I, I wonder, I'm wondering, but with that said, one of our rules is that we, when we give each other movies, we don't frame the movie at all. We don't give any, any scaffolding or right. framework. We just right. say, here's a movie, you know, watch it. And, and it can be a little tricky nowadays because, uh, because, uh, most of this is streaming. There was a time when we'd give give each other like a VHS tape or a DVD, right. and 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 you, you literally had, had no, no idea. idea. But Nothing. but yeah. but uh, you know, I'm sure when you uh, probably went to rent Brawl, you know, you saw the picture of Vince Vaughn. Yeah, and, and, and it and gave that, you a description. But I will say, as my first comment about that movie, that description sucked. It was not <laughs> yeah. even close to you. what the movie was. You. Yeah, yeah, but the uh, but the. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, and, and uh, but like funny games, you can kind of get a little bit of an idea. Just kind mm-hmm. of, I, and I, I didn't read the description, but uh, but it uh, it makes it. We live in a world where there's so much information. Yeah, yeah. But what, what kind of uh-huh. cracked me up though is uh, you were you were uh, definitely like you 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 were, you were telegraphing some stuff. When okay, you were telling about sorry, it. yeah, yeah, you were. You were <laughs> like on a, purpose. You were I just like, like this yeah. movie had an impact on me. So I get it. Okay. So anyway, all right. Okay, so, so where you want to start? You want to start funny games? Sure. Okay. Let's okay. Start. What do you think? What's your, I, what's your initial really, reaction? I really wonder if you were like fucking with me with this movie, man. Because it, tell it, me, it is a hard watch. I yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you, okay. man. Not a not a huge fan. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. It, and and uh, and and just some background on this movie. Uh, it's about again Germany German language movie. It's subtitled. That's fine, you know. But you, you know you do have to read it. It's about a couple. They've got a young son. 
they uh, they go uh, uh, for a vacation in yeah, uh, their lake house, like the a lake summer house, lake house. You know, yeah, these are these are people clearly who are, have money. Yeah, uh, uh, clearly uh, uh, elite, uh, uh, affluent individuals. They're, you know, in the be- in the beginning of the movie, they're playing like a guessing game with classical music, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and they have this this son uh, who you know is a well behaved, probably eight year old or something like that mm. for the most part, and. Uh, these two young men, and these two young men look like kind of, uh, you know, white college age, you know, yeah. you know, and they're wearing like they're wearing like what you might wear, like a tennis, uh, like type tennis outfit, outfit. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and uh, they proceed to uh, to come to the house and and kind of in, inject themselves in these people's lives, and then they it quickly deteriorates into them uh, torturing this couple. Mm. Over a period of of like well in the movie a day, yeah yeah it's over a day from like you know sometime in the afternoon to like nine o'clock in the morning the next day, mm. and uh, and honestly in the movie, it is just kind of them torturing this couple you mm-hmm. know and uh, and there are certain things in there where for example the uh, the main. Uh, antagonist uh, breaks the fourth wall he uh, on occasion it's almost like he's aware that he's in a film or he's he, mm-hmm. you know and uh, and uh, he even says certain things uh, that you know like this shouldn't happen now should happen later in the story right, things right. like that yeah he talks directly to the audience to yeah. the audience and, and uh, but, so let me interject right there and okay. tell you that when I when I um it's been a long time since I've seen that film. Right. And then when I suggested it to you, I had forgotten all about that. And I and I will tell you that I think that's the worst part of the film. It yeah. it, it was a it was a director's choice or whatever right. they decided to do there, but I I didn't like that part of the film. Yeah, it's funny you should say that cuz uh, my wife was like she felt that that really yeah, if it there took was, away a lot, didn't it? Yeah. And and uh but, I mean, we we sometimes we'll talk about. We always we talk about how there's certain things that happen in the in the past, and it sets a certain it it, it breaks it breaks new ground, mm-hmm. and then it doesn't age well. And other things will break new ground, and it still and turn into classics. It's, yeah. it's, it's most of it. Right. And and I think that this movie did do some of that. There mm-hmm. was there was some. Th- this was the very definition of subverting expectation. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I did go afterwards, and I went to like uh, certain film sites to kind of, to to you know see if I could get some insight from other individuals. And there mm-hmm. is there is that you know the director you know they talk about how at the time there was a lot of slasher movies, and this was maybe kind of a response to those mm-hmm. movies. But I don't know, you know, I I uh, it it wasn't you know, and it may be me. It, it I, I struggle. You know, with watching a couple get tortured for for 120 minutes, you know what right. I mean? It was rough. So I'll tell you the parts that I, the, well, not the parts, but what it was well, about liked, the film that sure. I liked so much for me. And I said this on this podcast as well as elsewhere a zillion times. Um, entertainment, whether it's mm-hmm. poetry or music or movies or <clears throat> paintings or whatever, right? Um, their main job is to elicit a response. Right? Sure. Some kind of response. And sometimes it's educational, sometimes sure. it's emotional, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And this movie, I think, scarred my psyche. I okay. think it, it, if I would ever, I don't have nightmares about movies, but if I was going to have a nightmare about a movie, it would be this one. Sure. It no. would be. And Th- because it is truly disturbing. And, and that's what I liked about it. And it's not like, hey, it's my favorite movie. I'll watch it all the time. But it's like, man, can you imagine ma- having, making a piece of art? Right. It was so powerful that it, it elicit, and it's the same as Quentin Tarantino and that damn Pulp Fiction, not Pulp Fiction, uh, Reservoir Dogs, when he cuts off that dude's ear. Right. It's that same, like, oh, my God, it's uh, it's grotesque to the point where you want to look away, but you can't look away. Yeah, and all that, right? I, 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 I get that. You know, so but that's where I was coming from on the on the recommendation. I, I you know, I, I will tell you, uh, I will never watch it again. Uh, okay, I yeah. watched it again yesterday just I, I, for this. I yeah. can imagine, yeah. And yeah. Uh, but um, I, I uh, again, I, I, it was made in 1997, mm-hmm. so at the time it may have been something that uh, that was it, it was new for the time. It it mm-hmm. it's so I I don't hate on subverting expectations, but I felt the movie did subverted expectations just for the sake of doing it. Okay. And I felt that there was, again, that, that whole talking to the camera, I felt, and, and you mentioned you didn't like it, I felt that that was kind of gimmicky. Yeah, you know? me too, totally, yeah. It, yeah, and... Uh, but I also felt this. How, how do you think How do you think about this? Like, I, 
don't know. Maybe did you did you have a strong emotional reaction to this, or yeah. were you like, eh, it's okay? No, no, it it, it, it was like, disturbing. Right? It was disturbing. Yeah, but, okay, good. But well, so here's what I was thinking, and I thought about this yesterday after I watched it again because there's even a part where where um, <clears throat> the good guys shoot one of the bad guys, right? yes, and then he rewinds, right, and then stops that from happening, yes, right. So well, I was thinking to myself, like, why if I'm making a film, why would I put that in there? Like, right. it, you know, it's just like you said, it's gimmicky and it feels cheap and stuff, you know, right. But I thought, well, maybe it's to try to relieve some of the weight and the gravity of this damn movie because it was heavy man it's oh like, well uh, and, and and uh yes maybe maybe, yeah, well, maybe. i don't know yeah. Yeah, I, I, was, I, I don't you know, know whatever uh, but well i i, I uh, i'm trying to avoid using the term like torture porn you know but that's kind of the vibe i got yeah with but it. okay so let's clarify for people who haven't seen it right. uh, and might this might get them curious enough to watch it you don't see them it's not graphically torturous no. it's all psychological certainly and that's yes. the thing. Uh, it's like, I, so you expect, so tell, tell, we'll go through a couple of these scenes. Okay. Right. So the, there's a scene in there where the, the, the two young men finally have revealed that they have bad intentions, right? right. And the, the father is gimped up because they clubbed him in the leg with a, with a golf club. So right. he can't really walk. Right. And so, um, so he's sitting on the sofa in pain. The little kid's only eight or 10 or something. So he's, sure. he's pretty much no, no uh, threat. Right. But then they make that woman take her clothes off. Right. And you're, Totally, the whole time you're expecting uh, the, some kind of a rape or something, right? Right, but they don't. Doesn't happen. They don't even show her nude. I know. They just they, they but they the camera and the camera stays on her. Yeah, but and, just and, from like above the shoulders. Just yeah, and you, and, can, and, and, and you just watch her kind of yeah, uh, and, mentally decompensate. Yes, yeah, right. Insane. I'm talking like from the perspective of. Uh, subverting expectations. Like sure, you totally expect something well, different to happen, and it doesn't. And and I. I, I would understand. I, I I think I know what your response to this would be is going to be, but uh, I, I still I, I, I don't feel like this movie had any sort of arc to it. You know, it was just me watching this happen. Okay, and uh, and I, I you know I. I I guess maybe I was expect you know I I was hoping for like that John Wick moment you know where okay. like when she got a hold of the shotgun and right. shot Tubby right you know but he rewinded it so right, it didn't right. happen right yep. uh you, you know and so so maybe I did I, I I you know you might be thinking well of course that's what everybody expects and it didn't happen you know well, and that's so what made this kind of interesting it, but it, it was yeah that's a good word interesting it made it interesting and and to right. me slightly appealing right but that, that, that wasn't the big appeal to the movie the the big appeal to the movie was the ability of a filmmaker to right. get through a 2d screen to be able to create right. psychological Terror in my right. brain, right? And I'm a super analytical film watcher. You know right. what I mean. So the average person would be like, "Oh my god!" They would probably turn it off. You know what <laughs> well, I mean? Like, yeah, I think a lot of people did. Yeah, you probably know? But, did. Yeah, but no, and it, and it actually, it actually is. You know, as far as you know, you look at things like Rotten Tomatoes. It's it's uh, like I think it's like a 71 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which is good. Is it good? Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and even, but uh, okay, so let's talk about this then. Uh -huh. I I cannot remember a film. Where I can pinpoint better, more natural acting than that that mother. Oh, she was. Oh my God, that was phenomenal and acting. I, I, I kind of got the Shelley Duvall Shining vibe, you know. Like yeah, but more realistic than that. Even I, I felt like okay because uh, Shelley Duvall, I mean, she was literally Hubert. <laughs> Hubert just nailed her, but know, but, uh, but this uh, chick like the, I mean, man, the continuity in the film for one, right. like you know the 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 clothing and all of the stuff in the room was perfect. Right. I didn't, I never caught any inconsistencies in any of that. Right. But then also her 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 state her mental state like oh. and she went through some roller coaster stuff right and and um yeah i mean well i yeah you know well i yeah th that I, I never questioned whether or not those people are actually getting tortured yeah, you know what i mean what it felt like, that's exactly it felt like it felt like a snuff film, yeah, you know so exactly. so uh but uh but it, and also how uh you know when when the movie started going and Regrettably, I did kind of know about the movie, so I kind mm -hmm. of knew where it was going. Uh, but even even outside of that, I I kind of always knew how it was going to play out. You know, I just okay. always kind of knew that, and so I I never felt like I was 
challenged in that way. Okay. I mean, yeah, I get I, that. Yeah, I mean, so so uh, you know, there 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 are definitely certain things I can appreciate about it. I I mean, uh, the acting was was superb. You know, yeah, I thought so. But but well, the uh, scene. So for example, cut just a couple of examples on that. The scene where. Um, the the boys had left. Yeah, <clears throat> and she's about to climb out the kitchen window. Yeah, and and he says, "Please forgive me," because he knows. Right, like he kind of knew when when he slapped that kid just mm. before that when right. she stormed off all pissed off. Like I asked you to throw these guys out. Right, surely I have a reason. Don't question me. Right, and take their side. Right, surely he was feeling inadequate at that time and questioning his own of commitment. Course. Right, right. And then all of a sudden, this turns into what it turned into. He was feeling guilty the whole time. Like fuck, I could have stopped this from the very beginning. And, right, and, and and didn't. And now look where we are. So that scene uh, when when he said. Please forgive me. And she's halfway up the counter about to mm. climb out the window. And she looked back at him. Right. She paused right there. Mm. And and I was trying to read her face and like, what is she going to say? What is she going to do? You know what I mean? But right. the, the, the emotional transition that she was able to like uh, muster up from inside and then she went over and kissed him and said, I love you. Like you already are forgiven. This is just a bad situation that we're in. Sure. Man, I. It's Academy Award stuff, if you it was, ask it me. Was, that was powerful. I, I mean, crazy. But but I I uh, a couple other thoughts, other things I had had issue with. Uh, some some of the things I thought were kind of important happened off camera, you know. And uh, the other thing, see, is, I, I think that's I, I I enjoyed that part of it. Okay, uh, uh, but but how he ended up with you know with the, with her and, and when they when they came back, you know, when when uh, Peter and Paul came back, mm-hmm. you know, Tubby or whatever. And uh, the other thing is, uh, while I like the acting, I didn't like any of the characters. Like I did, agreed, yeah, I, agreed. I, and and also I felt uh, that the husband and wife, after you know when they left, made like a series of like bad decisions. I, I still to this moment don't understand why she didn't get in the land, you know, the land yeah, rover get in the car and, and go. just go. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and and uh, well, they don't tell you because it's. Uh, yeah. It, was it there or was it not there? Is that the, what the boys took because they yeah. were in a car? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, okay. Last last point I want to try to make here real okay. quick, and that is, um, and, and again, this is from a filmmaking perspective. Sure. That shot of um, it, right after. Okay, so the Paul is in the kitchen grabbing sandwich or whatever. Yes, you talking the the tubby. Then, yep. Yep. No, Paul. No, that's Peter. That's tall. Uh, no, Paul. Paul was the okay. Peter, whatever his <laughs> yes, name was. Peter. Yeah. Tom was the other guy. Tom Tubby. Tubby was Paul. No, wasn't it? No. Oh, I think Paul was. Paul was the. Yeah, Anna was the woman. Yeah. George was the the, the, husband, the husband and the son. Same name. Yeah, same name. Paul was the was Tubby. Mm-mm, Peter. I'm, Peter was the uh, okay. Either way, yeah, yeah it doesn't whatever. matter. I'm okay. sorry. I'm no, no, sorry. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. I know who you're talking but about. Guy, yeah. And then and then so Tubby's in the living room with those three, and a fight ensues, and uh, oh, the yeah. shot the shotgun goes off. Right. I hear you. I, I don't. And remember. they and they kill the kid. He did. Yeah. Yeah, but they Tubby don't did. show you that. No, they don't show you that. But when they cut away, they don't even cut away. They stay on the kitchen. Right. And and the one guy walks out of the kitchen into the living room, and off camera you hear dialogue. He says, "Why did you Why did you kill this one first? Because the right. whole thing about this is these guys are total psychopaths, right? And sociopaths, maybe I'm not sure. You're the <laughs> medical guy, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but anyway, at the at the end of the day, they're arguing because they have a game that they play. Who who gets killed first? Who gets killed right. second? And that comes in later, and you get a clearer picture of that. But that scene when they cut back to the living room, uh-huh. and the kid is laying on the floor dead. Right. The father is basically. Freaking out. Yeah. Well, yeah. first he's catatonic and then he. He's catatonic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then her reaction. Again, this woman, I think I would vote her number one actress I've ever seen in a film for, for that particular scene. Right. And then how long did they hold that shot? Forever. That shot sat Ever. Where she, where where they left and she was there she, yep. and she didn't move. I mean, yeah. I mean, and it, I thought it was interesting. She went over and cut the TV off. Yeah, and uh, and kind of going back, uh, <clears throat> I, I I the discussion they had about you know killing the the kid first. I kind of looked at that like the this guy the 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 uh, the leader you mm-hmm. know the the brunette the skinny guy mm-hmm. uh, he. Uh, 
he felt like he was in a movie, you know, like this was a movie, and, mm-hmm. and you know, so 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 I almost I almost felt like him talking about killing the kid almost first, like breaking script, yes, or something. breaking script. Yeah. In other words, yeah. you don't kill the kid first, you right, know. Right. And I also thought it was interesting that that whole sandwich making scene, that clearly things were going pear shaped in, in the, the other, in, room, other yeah. room, and he, what did he do? He just kept making a sandwich. kept making a sandwich. Yeah. You know, he doesn't care. You know, yeah. so I did find those things interesting. You yeah. know, and. Uh, you, but uh but but that shot oh yes I mean, it held for a solid two minutes it camera did. did not move neither did she she and, just sat there yeah i i yeah. so to me again as a viewer i'm thinking to myself like what's gonna happen what's gonna happen right what's gonna happen what's gonna happen and as the filmmaker that was a or probably the editor more likely that was a brave brave yeah. choice bold move cotton yes because mm-hmm. you're you're you have time as the viewer to explore the scene right because you kind of got gypped from seeing the actual shotgun blast and all of that right and they give you a little bit of the aftermath and then they plunk that scene in front of you and then you can sit there and your eyes can roam around and explore the whole room and you're looking for the mom you're looking for the dad do something do something right but they're they're traumatized you're witnessing these human beings like seconds after probably the hardest emotional trauma that they could ever imagine right. to be inflicted upon them. Right. And and that's voyeuristic, kind of weird. <laughs> Good dog. Uh, but yeah, it's this weird voyeuristic yeah. kind of thing. So that was all that stuff, that psychological and ability to transfer this idea <laughs> from the filmmaker to the viewer. That's what got me the most about the movie. I, I, those things I appreciated. I just wish they were in a better movie. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> if you say so. I'm sorry, man. I mean, again, it, it I, is... again, there was some cheap stuff in there for sure. You know, the, right. the break in the fourth wall was lame. Right. And then, the, um, you know, at the very end, he goes to another house and then it goes, yes, and, and he introduces it's, me, it's, and it's it starts all over, all over yeah. again. Yeah. So that's all like cyclical stuff. Right. And, um, but anyway, yeah. So there it is. You got to see it. Too. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, to be to be clear, when I say you know, oh, I'm never going to watch it again. It's not because I hate. I didn't hate it. You mm-hmm. know, it it. I I will I will say it like this. You watch it again. No, you I'm will. Not, I'm not going. You will. I, you know. You know where I decided. You know where I decided I would never watch that movie again. Uh, I'm going to guess probably. I, I'll give you a hint. It uh-huh. happens pretty early on. Uh, I was going to say the eggs when he drops the eggs. Nope. And, no? Okay. No, nah, that's okay. I yeah, mean, where? we killed the dog. The dog, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and you knew right when they had a uh, German Shepherd. Yeah. You're like, that dog's dead. Yeah. They're going to kill that damn yeah. dog, you know? Yeah. And uh, and so, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just, like, like. Like I was saying, I, the, the movie itself seemed like I, I kind of knew the ride that I was on when I was on it. Uh-huh. And uh, so nothing really happened where I was like, oh, my gosh, that was mm-hmm. that was, you know, and, and so it was kind of predictable. It was and, and I, I, I'm, I'm I like some horror, but that was kind of that suspense horror thing. Mm-hmm. I, I maybe someday I might read like a because the, the, the individual. Well, let me see what his name was. The uh, Michael Hanke. Is the writer and director, and he and he did do a remake of this in two thousand seven. Yeah, American that was um, what's his name? Uh, oh, I forget the uh, actor's name. Kevin Bacon. I it? think so. I think Kevin Bacon did that. You mean he? You mean he I think started? He was he was the father in that. I think. I think really, it was Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, I have no idea. I, you know, I know he, did, but he is the, the the this individual is the one that. So maybe I might read an interview with okay, him someday. It might be Tim Roth. I'm not sure. Tim Roth. It was Tim Roth. Was it Tim Roth? Yeah, okay, Tim Roth. Yeah, yeah, I was so. just thinking. They look yeah, the I same anyway. like, yeah. hey, Everybody looks like uh, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Tim Roth has worked with Kevin Bacon. Yeah, probably. Uh, so, but uh, okay. So yeah. that's funny games. Um, it, it's uh, to me. I, the only reason I say you'll watch it again is because that movie will stick with you. That oh. movie will it's it scars your psyche, like, and and at some point in the future you're going to be like, I mm, can't remember. I don't know. Maybe mm, I'll watch it again. No, no, maybe not. Okay. No, no. All I right. mean, yeah, it, it definitely. Like when I went to bed, I was kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, Dude, I'm not kidding I, you. I, was I had t- my pistol close. I, I did. I, I, home invasion. That's it. I'm starting to shoot, man. I was, don't telling, come to my house. I was <laughs> telling my boss about it today, like like what we were going to do, and he goes. 
was he fucking with you? And I go, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't I know. No, you know, you know, uh, no, I didn't think you were, yeah. but, uh, but well, I told him, I don't think he was because he was, when we were talking about it, he was clearly, he, there was definitely passion. There was yeah. this, this, uh, this artistic passion anyway, yeah. but, uh, hey, but, so, so, right, so what did you think about, uh, some, oh, let me see, let me take a quick look. What did you think about cell block 99? Cell block 99. Um, I actually, I liked it. Great. I did. Yeah. I liked it. Um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I like Vince Vaughn. Before we go, let's let's tell people what it's about. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, so you go. Okay, okay. Uh, well, no, you do. You talk about it, because I talked about uh, Funny Games. Okay, um, so Brawl and Cell Block 99 was um, a film with Vince Vaughn as the, as the lead character, and he was a uh, he was a, kind of a, a career criminal trying to get straight and he had himself when the movie opens he has himself like a regular job as like a tow truck driver or something but he is clearly has some sort of gang history that they never really explain right but he's shaved head with a great big um tattoo of a iron cross on the back of his skull so you make him kind of seem like he's a white supremacist type of dude you know maybe, what i mean maybe one of those that's that's kind of what the I, I, they they lead you in that direction they don't never tell you exactly yeah but, i don't know okay but anyway so um yeah he's trying to get his life right and um the whole movie is pretty well summed up in his speech that he gives when he when he comes home finds out that his girlfriend or wife i think his wife has been having an affair um, this is like literally right after he gets fired. He comes home early and she's sitting in the driveway in the car. And he's like, hmm, that's weird. And she's, I don't know, putting on makeup or something. But anyway, he gets suspicious and comes over and looks and at her phone. And he's having a bad day. And yeah, so he's having a bad day, gets fired, finds out the wife's cheating. <clears throat> and then he's, he, it, that part of the movie I found interesting because right after that, his reaction to that I thought was really an interesting non um stereotypical reaction because he says get in the house and you think oh shit he's gonna go beat her or something you know and he doesn't do that um tony's trying to pick up the dog <laughs> yeah you got it all right so you can hear some uh -oh. you can hear some some grunting yeah okay anyway so yeah he um he basically his day goes from bad to worse uh and it turns into months worth of bad to worse and this is the, the one negative that i was going to say um I found that there was almost zero character arc on this in this film right uh, until the absolute very end and it wasn't even really any kind of a change in the character it was just he released his inner beast or whatever you want to say right so, which was uh, always which was always there yeah yeah it was always so, there but it was it was good in a in a uh, right. vengeance kind of movie you know what I mean it was mm -hmm. I, I liked it and I liked Vince Vaughn my, my favorite character in the whole movie was Don Johnson's character it was, was interesting pretty yeah. great man. And, and, and just to kind of, kind of if I can build on that just yeah, a little yeah. bit so uh, yeah like you were saying I, I didn't ever I wasn't too sure about white supremacy he definitely was somebody that had, had, had a history of violence and, well, that uh, tattoo, he had, you know, that tattoo on the back of his head. And the cross, I, I don't yeah. know if you caught, um, did, did you ever see? Um, oh, American History X? Yeah, yeah. Where, where they stomped the guy's head. And uh -huh. So I think it was all homage to that sort of stuff. Well, so. yeah. and and uh, But he, uh, he well, I think he was trying to get right. And then, yeah, he was then, trying then, to get right for and, sure. And then, that, like you're saying, that opening scene, uh, he basically kind of tells her that the whole world's kind of out to get him. Yeah. And the only way that he can he can get their, get their life Get them, a, get them a better life if he go if he gets back into uh, yeah, drug run. Yeah, and 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 he's and he's smart. He's a, he's a very smart individual, right. but very blue collar. And uh, and he d and one thing kind of after he gets back into the drug thing, I guess things kind of go okay for a little while. But then something kind of flips. There, there's an in, it, he he has to do a job with a uh, with a Mexican drug cartel guy. And mm -hmm. that goes south. Yeah, he doesn't want to do it, and the guy that he's working for sort of forces him to do it. Kind right, of. and and uh, and 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 he ends up getting arrested. But he's a he's a uh, you know stitch uh, snitches get stitches kind of guy, mm -hmm. and so he takes the rap. He ends up getting seven years, and I guess the Mexican drug cartel seeks revenge. And yeah, uh, and the other part of it that's that was a, was a major driving force is that. Um, 
after he found out his wife was cheating, uh, his reaction was not, I'm you know, going to go and beat you. Actually, I thought it was a great scene. He it took was. it out on the car. Yeah. He beat the living he, crap out of this car and blooded yeah. up his hands and it, stuff. And it looked and, good. Yeah, the it was Beating great. the car yeah, scene. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. yeah he, he, uh, it's just not as it unusual. It's like nothing that I had ever seen before in terms of like that kind of it emotional really release. It really looked like a guy beating the shit out of a yeah, car. Did, you know? Yeah. yeah. But then he goes inside and, and he... He says to the wife, you know, it goes through that typical, like, how, oh, when does it all start? How long have you been doing this? Da, da, da. But right. then, then he makes the decision to try to keep the family together, and, and they decide to try to get pregnant again. Right. And what I really liked about that is is uh, he wasn't a guy who was, like, whipped. Mm-hmm. He he made the decision that, you know, to be the good man, he was going to make this work. Yes. And I also, like, after... You know, he says, "Okay, we're going to uh, we're going to make this work," and she comes over to uh, to like hug him. Yeah, he says, "I need some time." I, yeah, he says, "You don't want to touch me right now. Yeah, give, you know? give me some time before." Yeah, we get yeah, close. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, don't do. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I think that's the exact line. Yeah. Yeah. Give me some time before we get close. Yeah, and because because he's a man with just this is inner rage. This inner rage, and the thing is, though, this individual can channel this rage in a way. Where it's almost like at like superhero level. It's not yes. a superhero movie, but right. but his his and, and I thought like the fight scenes were like raw and visceral, and okay. they seemed realistic in a lot oh, of see, ways. See, I had the opposite reaction. Really? Yeah. yeah, I thought they were clumsy. But, uh, but, and I was going to say that I yeah. I thought the fight scenes were clumsy. They were fun to watch. Yes, I mean it was yeah. it was definitely entertaining. Right. But I thought they were clumsy just because of his size. He's so freaking big. He as is. A, as a human being, he's so large right. that it, it's not, you know, Bruce Lee. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. I mean, he's like a big clunky bastard. Right. But he's got a lot of power. So when he hits somebody, of course, they feel it. Yeah. Know? When they hit him, he doesn't. Yeah. You know, and uh, <laughs> but there were scenes like where he would dodge and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and uh, they were... They, uh, unlike you know the shaky cams we see like in Born Identity or something, mm-hmm. all of these the camera pulled back, yeah, and uh, and just let you kind of witness the the violence. Yeah, you know? there wasn't all the quick cuts, right? Uh, and, between and, all the close ups and the jabs and all that stuff. Yeah, and the movie wasn't. Well, I mean, it, it was a slow burn, mm-hmm. right? Because yep. because we had you know it took a while for him because because what it, what happened is when he gets arrested, he ends up getting put in this this medium security uh, lockup and. Life isn't going to be too great, but it's not going to be too bad. He'll survive. Yeah. He and even has a, again, back to his character development, he yeah. has a discussion with um, his wife when she comes to visit him after he's been arrested and said, right. don't come visit me. Right. Don't bring don't bring the kid to visit. She's you know, pregnant. All that yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want him, the kid to see me in prison for the first time they ever see me. And da, 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 da. So he's he's really doing his best to take the high road and make the best of a bad situation. Right. And, and, and and even though the, uh, the, the uh, drug... Lord or whatever, Lord, drug right. kingpin. You know he's a sleazy guy, but he respects he res- he respects the Vince Vaughn character, oh, the guy that he was working for. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. but and not the Mexican, not guy. the Mexican guy. No, right. the Mexican guy just he he literally just uh, you know he <laughs> the whole. But when we finally get into Cell Block ninety nine mm-hmm. and uh, you, you, seeing the Vince Vaughn character, I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. Uh, oh, on top of my head, uh, it was. Uh, Mitch or Bradley, something. Bradley, That's Bradley right. Thomas, and so when so hey, watching, I wonder if that was like a nod to Bradley Thomas. Who's Bradley Thomas? He's that actor. I don't know. Yeah, Bradley, Bradley, isn't it Bradley Thomas? He's still on rom coms and stuff. Oh, oh, cute guy. Everybody, all the girls like him. Don't know who that is. Oh, all right. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> but uh, Bradley but, Cooper. Sorry, Cooper. That's it. Bradley oh, yeah. Cooper. So, sorry. but uh, but uh, uh, you know. What in, in there? How and and to explain, uh, he's in the medium security. They send a a person who's who's uh and, and his wife is pregnant and and uh, this guy is comes under the uh, under he he lies and this this person that comes to visit him says you know it's his wife ob uh, his wife's ob and he's got some uh, distressing news and when he gets there it's clearly not his wife's ob and they, they say we're going to kill you we're going to do terrible things yeah, to your wife kidnapped your wife yeah and we're, we're going to and, and, yeah. and what what we need you to do where the you know the mexican drug lord says we need you to uh, go to maximum security prison go to cell block 99 and kill this guy uh, and and we'll be even, right? If right. you don't do this, we're going to kill your wife and your mm, your unborn, unborn child. child yeah. yeah, and uh, of course he so he has to uh, inflict violence on individuals in the medium security prison. So he yeah, gets so thrown he in maximum security. Once he gets thrown in maximum security, he's not in the right cell block, and so he has to do sh- 
do uh, some bad stuff in the maximum mm. security prison, which, by the way, and, and again, it gets a little cartoony, but it's still kind of realistic. Mm. I and mean, that prison was was uh, with the in and uh, Doug mentioned Don Johnson. Don Johnson was the warden, yes. and he was he was your typical like uh, you know uh, you know what we got here is a lack you know yeah 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 he was a very cartoon yeah, character yeah, yeah and uh, <laughs> and uh, so he ends up. You know, doing what he needs to do, he gets in the cell, and it turns out to be a ruse, just so mm. the the Mexican drug lord can come and torture Vince Vaughn, but he's not having any of it. Yeah. You know, and so uh, he so gets, he gets his comeuppance. Well, the, the the my and and you know the the you know the the uh, <laughs> and it was it's very violent, but there, there's a scene where uh, I love the scene where. Uh, he he uh, he ends up like he he kill he ends up killing all the people around the drug lord you know in these in these very brutal fights he goes to the drug lord and he says uh, holds the phone and says uh, tell your man to to let my wife go and he goes uh, I I'm I, you know I'm not going to do that you know you don't have any options and Vince Vaughn goes oh I think I have options mm-hmm. and he and he freaking breaks his leg yeah. but he breaks it in, like the most brutal way possible yeah backwards knee thing. yeah oh it's terrible and uh, and you know but he just he's just a direct he's just directed I, so yeah. I I don't know yeah, it's very matter of fact in his in he, his actions it, and stuff and you mentioned how much you like Vince Vaughn there's funny <laughs> Vince Vaughn in there too it's just kind of buried behind this guy you know like, yeah yeah it's it's hard to ignore Vince Vaughn as the funny Vince he's Vaughn funny bit. well and there's also that part where i think somebody asked him if uh if he read something and he goes uh i don't read i don't even like watching movies with subtitles yeah <laughs> <laughs> um okay so yeah so that's the basic movie now i will say um okay i'm gonna take a left turn on you real quick mm-hmm. uh after after he beats up the car and he you know he finds out the wife's cheating and he beats up the car and he goes inside he's kind of calmed down a little bit right and him and the wife come to an agreement, like she's not going to do that again, and and they're going to try to have a baby and make this whole thing work. Right. He explains to her why he is is struggling, and what he says is, when you go to the gas station to get coffee. Oh yeah. And you and you grab the container to put um, cream. There's always like three or four containers, yeah, and they're milk. never labeled. And yeah. one is cream, and one has got flavored stuff, and one's got skim stuff. Yeah, one's got skim, one's yeah. got cream, and, and they're one's never got... labeled. And right. so you would think, just based on mathematical theory, that if you went into that garage a thousand times and just grabbed a pitcher, at some point you would grab the cream first. Right. That was but, his thing. But he says, "I never grab the cream first. Right. It's always the skim shit that I don't like." Right. And so that was his way of saying the world is against him. Right? Yeah. It's us against the world, right? right? Well, okay, so this is my left turn. Sure. I've had this very same exact thought, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a great I, scene, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that that pretty much tells you everything you need to know about the character right, right. there. But, um, <clears throat> <laughs> you know, things are going to go I, sideways I, with him. Yep. Uh, yeah. But I get up uh, in the morning, usually at least an hour or two before my wife. Right. And I try to be courteous and not turn on the light. Okay. I don't get up and flick the light on, right? I'm right. trying to be nice. And so I always will, um, I'll grab a t shirt mm-hmm. and um, throw my shorts and t shirt on. I swear to you, Tony, I swear to you, n- at least, I, I can't even remember one time, but I'd say more than 99% of the time, the shirt is on either inside out or backwards. I hear you. Every time. And I think the same thing he was thinking. You would think after enough times, eventually I would put the shirt on correctly. Right. But, but nope, never. No. Nope. Well, yep. The sun comes up. I go to walk the dog. I walk out. I'm like, oh, fuck my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, man. I get so it. So I've had that very yeah. same discussion in oh, my own head. I know. Like, you know what? <laughs> so I, I connected deeply with that particular I, scene in the movie. I, let's let's keep it diverting. I, okay. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. You know, and also, you ever notice, like, sometimes, like, you'll, like, be carrying something. Let's say it's, like, a phone charger, uh-huh. right? And it'll fall out of, it'll fall, right? Uh-huh. And uh, and it'll get, like, wrapped around, like, the leg of a chair uh-huh. in a way where it's it's on, it's it's stuck, right? Yeah, you can't just grab it and pull, and pull it away. It's stuck yeah. now. And you, and I, th- I swear to God. You think to yourself, like, if I tried to do that. I'd never, get, I would yeah. never do it. I, could I would never 10, do it. I could thousand times. And, and it I would could never do that. Do it, yes. it, it is like, it is like throwing the bat hook up yes. on, a, exactly. on a ledge. <laughs> and, and that, you know, like a grab grappling hook and i'm like jesus and, you know yeah I, I could try that a thousand yes. times like a million times and now yeah. and now i've got to, i've, got, it. It. I've yeah. got to get down there untangle this thing <laughs> yeah yeah oh it's no, just it's exactly just, it, and i have that when i'm like when i'm working in the yard you know yeah i'll 
I'll, I'll be like whatever. I have a plugged in like a leaf blower or something, right. you know, and plugged in. <laughs> uh, sure enough, man, that yeah. damn the hose or the extension cord right. is going to get wrapped around the one thing in right. the garden that it can get actually stuck on and potentially break. Right. And that's what it's going to get. Yeah. And, right? and, and, Son of a bitch. And, and you always pull it like yeah. thinking, uh, and, you, and you do that like wrist flip thing. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. oh, why can't it just, yeah. why is this thing out there? Yeah. Anyway. But the God hates me. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but. Uh, anyway, so yeah, yeah. I identify, identify with that. But let me tell you some of the stuff that I liked and didn't like. Sure. About yeah, it. please. Um, I thought it had really weird pacing. Okay. And so what I mean by that is um, he gets fired from his job. Right. He, he comes home and the wife's cheating. You, you, uh, he has a different reaction than you expect him to have when he says to the wife, "Let's make this thing work." And then he gives right. the speech about the cream. By now, you know who this guy is. Right. You know who he is. But then we literally have twenty more minutes of character development in this movie. True. Then they show you how awesome he is with the boss, even though he's a drug dealer. Then they show you how he's. Uh, when the drug deal starts to go bad, he's still a stand-up guy. He's a good, bad guy, right? So he, he, is, he yeah. killed the Mexican cartel guys because they were shooting at the cops. Right. And, and uh, he was right about that deal, too. Yeah, yeah, he was right about the deal. And so anyway, so I thought that was weird. Like, it just took t- – they, they beat you in the face with the fact that he was a stand-up kind of guy. I, I will agree with that. It was like – I called that, – that's what I meant when it was kind of a slow burn. It, right. You know, they, they do – like like you were saying, yeah, he goes to – you see him uh, conduct a, a, a drug – money pickup right and that scene is a long scene yeah and it know? doesn't add anything not at really all no. to his character yeah they just it was just a device to get him arrested you know to get right him to well the, i'm, to I'm even talking about he even goes someplace and and during that and he and he just gets picks up money yeah there's you know yeah yeah so um so yeah the creamer story was great i made a note on that um, yeah that's cool uh the cinematography i thought was excellent Okay. In this movie. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but they changed colors from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. And and, and I thought that was really good. It starts off, he's in a, and they even got a damn blue. I don't know. Do you know a thing about blue and orange no, in movies? No, Yeah, this, um, you can look at, I would say, 60 or 80% of the big, big movies. Mm-hmm. That don't have a, an actual color theme. So Spider Man would have a color theme, right? right. He's red, right? right? Superman would be red, Batman would be black. But look at most other movies, like Avatar, Maverick, any of those. The movie poster is always going to be um, blue and orange mm. and some variation of mm. that. And it is a psychological trick that they have figured out that makes the movie more attractive. It's the same. Our, our, we're sheep, right? That's right. essentially what it is. Um, the same reason that red is in restaurants because it makes us, it triggers the hungry thing. So McDonald's is red and Arby's is red and so on. Anyway. Right. So what these guys did is they took that concept and they started the movie in blue and they ended it in this real dark orangey sort of dungeony kind of sure. because that's what cell block 99 was kind of like a dungeon it was um so they they ended up there which i thought that was a that was a clever little trick and it was real subtle you didn't really notice it but i mean if you look at the first scene and the last scene you can it's a stark difference it's sure. dramatic yeah because even they, they i was going to say they even gave him a blue um truck that he was driving his um his wrecker you know this tow truck mm-hmm. it was blue so oh, I mean, wow. yeah so they, they all of that stuff is intentional um and and it was muted too the colors were kind of you know yeah yeah, yeah. So. And, it, and it got darker as we went on in certainly the, in the film because of course the the mood got darker and the right the locations and stuff got darker so i thought that was kind of cool um I, it felt like the storytelling was a little forced hmm. um so I don't know if you've if you've ever tried to write a story or tell a story to a kid or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to think of ways to 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 make your character interesting, right? You have to think of ways to whatever. So Luke Skywalker, um, with, with going into the Joseph Campbell hero's journey stuff, mm-hmm. uh, Luke Skywalker was totally not going to go join the rebellion. He was just a kid, right? Right. And then they killed his family and. They forced him into that. Right. And I felt like this was that over and over and over and over again, right? He right. loses his job. His wife's cheating on him. Then, weirdly, this is the part that I found the most weird. What the hell? He finally is successful, right, in being a drug runner, 
and he moves to suburbia. He lives in this freaking like <laughs> suburban house and like living this perfect suburban life. I think and, like, he promised uh, his wife that though. He was, did. Is that what it was? I, yeah. I'm not sure. But anyway, I found that to be a little bit strange. And he covers his car up with a camo net in the backyard and stuff. So. I think, I guess he, he's, I, I, I got the idea that the, the cover up car thing, and I, and I hadn't really thought about that. You just mentioned it, but I think he's got, you know, the car he uses for drug running. Yes. And, uh, and, and then, then they got their regular and then he's got his, SUV. He, he, or yeah, he's, yeah. He separated his two lives. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So he's just basically trying to make the wife happy. I can yeah. And, that. and I think, I think he's a, he's a methodical calculating individual. Mm. Yeah, you know, you get that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, and, and, uh, when you get to the end <laughs> of the movie, like where he's, he's, uh, you know, he's, making sure his wife is safe while he's getting revenge on all those individuals. Yeah. You know, he never, he, he's, he, he, the, his emotions never, his outward emotions never change in the movie. Right. He's, he's constantly in control. Right. And, and I think he's two, two or three steps ahead of everybody. Yeah. 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 And he doesn't reveal that. And that's what makes his character interesting. But yeah. Like, so typical in the, in the hero's journey thing, at some point, you know, you would go, as the hero, you would go to some place that is is uh, unrecognizable by you, right. and you would have to master that sort of domain, and then you come back to your home world, and then you've mastered both worlds, right? right. But he never comes home. No, <laughs> and, no. And he, so yeah, and again, I found I found that to be an interesting take, but um, an interesting it choice. Just, it, it felt like the story arc was really, really, really shallow all the way up until the very end when he realized, like. Uh, okay. I'm I've not getting played. out of here alive. I've been played. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the character arc happens and it's very dramatic and it's, and it's very steep curve. Right. So, uh, did you like that? Um, yeah, kind of like you said about the other movie, you could see it coming. You knew something, right. you know, yeah, this is not a movie that, uh, it's not full of subtleties. That's no, sure. yeah. you, you kind of know where you're going. Yeah. yeah you know where this yeah. is going. Um, I thought the lack of special effects was um, an interesting choice, but I felt like the fact that they used all physical effects, mm -hmm. uh, again, a decent choice, but it just wasn't done very well. Uh, really? Was, yeah, I thought, I it was goofy, man. I like was, what? Like where you like? Well, like when the, the guy's face, like when he rubs <laughs> the guy's face across the pavement and then he flips him over. I love that. It reminded me. I love it reminded that. me of the of the melting <laughs> face in, uh, uh, in, in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Oh so gosh, it I thought me. that was like, the, well, the so, arm break and leg break things I thought worked really well. That, uh, that stuff worked good. Right. But, um, that yeah, the the bloody face stuff, and well, then yeah, at the very last. Thing when he got shot, they showed you that, that, that wasn't you know, good. Watermelon blowing up or something. Yeah, like that, that wasn't good. I didn't. I didn't. I like the face thing. Uh, and just let everyone know uh, what we're talking about. Just to explain uh, when you know he takes control of the situation, uh, he fights. I, I think he he uh, he wants to you know show that he is in control. So he ends up fighting like three guys, and it's just it's the unstoppable force. And there's mm -hmm. a scene where he knocks a guy out. And uh, steps on the steps on the steps guy's on the face. He's laying face down. Yeah, laying he face steps down on the back of his head. Yeah. yeah, on his neck, and he like drags this guy's face, face across, across the, the concrete. Paper, and yeah. uh, and at first, everybody's like, "Oh, well, how bad can it be, really?" Yeah. You know. And he rolls roll the guy over. over, and his face is to the to skull, yeah. like he's scraped all the skin and nose off and everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I'll tell you right now the. Uh, Excuse me. The director of this movie, a guy by the name of a uh, Craig Zoller, Z A H L E R. Hopefully, I'm not butchering he's it. Probably German as well. No, no, he's a he's <laughs> a definitely. Um, I've I've seen interviews with him. I've I've, lay, I've well, after I watched this, I you know did my research. I uh -huh. went out and did a little research and saw some interviews with him. Uh, he actually talks that he he said that like when he's writing violence, if he writes something that he's like, oh that that shocks me that I can actually think that. He's like, well, that's staying in, okay. you know, okay. and uh, well, see, that goes right into my other theory about the other film, that right. same kind of a concept. It's like go over the top on purpose. Right. Almost, you know, but I liked Vince Vaughn. Yeah, I like the characters. Vaughn. I like yeah, the characters. Yeah, I, I like the story. Yeah, I'm not yeah. comparing the two movies. I'm just comparing the psychology yeah. from the writer's perspective. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But uh, uh, but yeah, cause I'm sorry. You, you had some other points. I uh, know. The only other thing I was going to say is that um, I thought the, the Don Johnson character again, uh, I liked him from the second he walked on camera. Sure. And, and Tony and I are going to do a, a podcast about supporting actors and character actors and stuff. And, and that 
I, right. I had that in my mind when I was watching this. I was like, I might just have to add Don Johnson to my list, man. Dude, I... Because he did a fantastic job in there, I thought. Sure, sure. Yeah. I'll well, tell you who else did a great job is is the wife. What was her name? Oh, Jennifer. Uh, what's her... Jennifer something. Jennifer... It's not Lawrence, isn't it? I know it's not Lawrence. Um, uh, it is... Uh, Jennifer Carpenter. Yes. Jennifer Carpenter. She was great. She was awesome. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, another thing about this movie. Why do I keep watching these people get tortured? But anyways. <laughs> we got to start... <laughs> Dude, Dude, I'm gonna watch Ariel but, next. I know. Well, oh, I was I was gonna comment that uh, <laughs> that uh, it's interesting. You talk. I I this morning I was I was riding my bike, you know, and uh, and I was listening to our podcast on uh, villains. Okay. Which, by the way, if you have if if you're listening to this right now, oh, uh, when we do recommendations here in a minute, I did get uh, some. You asked at the end of that podcast. Uh, uh, does anybody have uh, any favorite villains and some? And I got, got some, some feedback. Got some feedback. Okay, cool. So, uh, which I'm that. very happy about that. Yeah. But uh, and we'll do that at the end here. Okay. But uh, I was listening to that podcast and some of the stuff you talked about. You were you talked about uh, the uh, the I can't remember. I, you, you talked about the Ethan Hunt bad guy. Not and and, and oh yeah, and, um, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, Philip, Philip Seymour Hoffman. There's one other you talked about and and Gary and Bill, Ullman? No, I can't remember. I have to go back and, and maybe not, you know it may have been uh, Londa. Okay, and uh, both of those were kind of like they were bad because they tortured people. And I was like, Jesus, Doug has got a trend <laughs> going on here. <laughs> when I was writing, I was writing like uh, like I was like, God, he is a fan of the torture. No, you know what it is. And I thought about this yesterday too because right. I watched this damn cell block down there, and then I turned around and watched the uh, funny games. I'm like, Jesus Christ, same thing as you're thinking. Like, what the hell are we well, doing? What's wrong with us? But I think what it is, and, and when I was trying <laughs> trying to go to bed last night, I'm not even joking, dude. I put my pistol close. I like, oh I'm like, yeah, okay, I want to make sure no one. Uh, but I think what it is is again, it's that ability to affect somebody else's psyche. And and that's what this that's what Funny Games did. It it literally I will never forget that film because it was so disturbing and powerful. And I I won't rank it up there in the top ten or any of that kind of right. stuff. But for for the ability to do that, I mean, <clears throat> watch Friends. That's never going to happen, right? Watch Seinfeld. You know, whatever. All these other or or Freddy Krueger or whatever. I mean, it's just not it's not on the same level. And then I, I saw this Vince Vaughn film in a similar way, <clears throat> just because the, uh, which I was going to comment on this anyway, um, the, the the bad stuff that they were going to do to his wife, the mm. Mexican cartel yes. gang, yeah. was they were they had a, a Japanese uh, a Korean. surgeon, yeah. Korean surgeon, yeah. and he was going to actually go um, and cut the limbs off the baby and still right. allow it to be born. That's, right. That's how disgusting they were trying to right. get. Right. And, and they were they referred to him as the abortionist. The abortionist, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, I, again, I was thinking about that. I was thinking, like, the reason that it bugs me so much or why I'm, I'm so into it is because that that's kind of some of the worst stuff that I can think of sure. to do to somebody. Like right. you can punch somebody in the face, whatever, shoot somebody, yeah, whatever. But the psychological torture, like the stuff that that woman went through in Funny Games, and, right? Uh, just it's yeah. And I and I wanted to mention on the, the Funny Games you're talking about that, like uh, they definitely talked up torture, you know, and uh-huh. and and you would there was a, there was a scene where where they would. They were more focused on the reaction that people were having to other people getting tortured. Mm-hmm. Like there was a scene where the husband George was getting tortured, mm-hmm. and they they were staying on the wife. Yes. You know where he was using a knife, and he was saying, "I can kill you if you want, or I can kill your husband." Yeah. You know, and, and you get to choose the knife or the gun. The gun's right. quick, and then right, she was tr- obviously an impossible Sophie's yeah, choice probably, type yeah. of thing, right? But uh, and then so they stabbed the guy, and then they, they they don't show you him getting stabbed, but you hear it. You hear it and clearly, scream. and yeah. then you watch her reaction. Right. Which, again, there it's we not, go. That's for, that, that's the... Nauseating. Yeah. It just was. It is. Yeah, I'm just, again, I'm just not okay with it. <laughs> I'm not okay with it. You know, and, and, and it, because... It's a safe space, Tony. It's your living room. It's, it's okay. It's, it's not okay. It's not. I mean, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying about it sticking with you. There's movies that... Oh, that, well, that, not even, let's be clear. I'm not even saying it's going to stick with you in a good way. It's it not. didn't stick with me in a good way. It's, it's not. in a very bad way. Yeah. But... It, in, in your and now you have that as a point of reference for all Shit. future films. <laughs> Shit, and I can't gonna, even see. And you're gonna watch something else. And you're gonna go like, <laughs> okay, that's not as bad as Funny Games. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I just again, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to talk you into it. I'm just no, saying. I know, and I appreciate that. I mean, but uh, but the uh, but okay. So uh, what I was going to say, getting back, sw- swinging back around, we're we're, we're almost uh, we're almost done here, people. So just give us yeah. a second, okay? So the uh, the uh, another thing I I uh, I really liked about this movie, and just you know, I'm going to get a little third rail here for a second, is men were in th- cell block. Uh-huh. Men were men. Women were women, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, he yeah. protected his wife, you know, yes. and she was still a very strong, powerful oh, yeah, woman. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, there's that scene where <laughs> she, she grabs she the gun. The she's, she's, yeah. Yeah, she's the abortionist, but uh, but you know, she she not in no weak way at all. Yeah, she not at all. she uh, she knew who he was and she respected his his and ability think, to protect her. I think her. that she had a larger character arc than he did in oh. terms of transition because if. From the, from the first time you meet her, she is somewhat meek, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and she because she feels guilty because she was cheating and she knows it's wrong and whatever. Right. And and then when he reveals that he wants to stay together and try to have another baby, that was a somewhat of a revelation for right. her. Like, oh my gosh, I I don't deserve this. You know what I right. mean? And so her commitment level went through the roof at that point. Um, and then through so the rest of the film, she was committed to the to baby because she knew how much it meant to him and all of that. So I thought that was all yeah really yeah. good. She did a yeah. fantastic. Job. She was great. Yeah. And and uh, you know and he, he was asking her about you know why and you know and and the answer she gave was something along the lines of like you know their relationship was was kind of just very chaotic and coming apart. And she just needed she just needed that outlet, mm. and I was I was kind of like well I kind of get that you mm. know I mean yeah. clearly they're not in a healthy relationship and right. and I I you know like I mentioned before uh, I respected the fact that he was like you know I'm going to fix this mm-hmm. you know and not because he felt like you know he it was an he, egotistical thing or yeah, something it was it wasn't it, was, it wasn't that he needed her he he wanted that relationship with yeah, her yeah no exactly yeah so so yeah. Uh, and just re- kind of on, uh, bringing it around full circle here. Uh, the individual that made this movie, the guy I was talking about, he's actually done a uh, yeah a Craig S. Craig Zaler Zoller. Uh, he's also done a, a couple other movies. Hasn't has a lot, but he did a Bone Tomahawk. Have you seen that? I haven't seen it. Okay, so uh, don't no, nothing about that. It's a western. I know you like westerns, mm-hmm, I so do. we may have to, we may have to okay. in, investigate that in the future. Okay. He also did a Dragged Across Concrete, I think. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And uh, it's his... also it's also got well he yeah so he does his own things right yeah, I think yeah. it's called Drag. good for him yeah yeah and uh, and those are like the only ones he's done you know he's okay. done a couple he did he's done a, a puppet master movie <clears throat> and uh, yeah dragged across concrete and okay. uh, so and and uh, brawl brawl and cell block ninety nine is kind of sandwiched between dragged across concrete which came out in two thousand eighteen and bone tomahawk in two thousand fifteen I have seen bone tomahawk and. Maybe that's another one we'll add to the list. Okay. Now, I'm just thinking to myself, like, okay, so this is a no-name guy making indies, but he had freaking Don Johnson and Jennifer Connelly and Vince Vaughn, so he's not a no-name guy. I, yeah. I just don't know where he gets his projects from. Certainly not big studio stuff. He, he, I think he writes – I do think he writes uh, comic books and things like that, okay. and so he's, he's an author, too. Uh, Bone Tomahawk's got Kurt Russell in it, so yeah. uh, Patrick Wilson – Couple other people that are that are oh. big names too. So, okay. so he's got some cool. He's got some chops. All right. uh, but uh, so with that said, uh, yeah. So yeah, who was the villain? Who was the uh, who was the extra villain? What do you mean? You oh, oh okay. So we had another villain. Oh yeah. yeah. So uh, so uh, one of our, one of our <laughs> listeners, and uh, he wanted to remain nameless. So I won't give Heath's name out. Uh, so, so he actually texted Asshole me. Alert. It's, it's funny because he texted me and uh, like a couple nights ago, and he was like uh, Hannibal Lecter. Which yeah, I. I, I, I I considered him. I, I did, did too. but yeah. from, from me, from my perspective, from personally, I just, I just didn't think that was great. I love Jodie Foster in that, but right. I, I thought his character was. I you know it gets raves and all that sort of stuff, but I don't know. I, just I thought it was good. Well, one of the reasons I did also think about him, but I also thought I kind of wanted to go deeper on my cut. You know, and I thought yeah. Hannibal Lecter would be one that it's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah. kind of like, a, like, that, like mean, a Darth like, Vader one. I, I think he, you know, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, and and uh, yeah, but I I think that he had. A villainous moments in that movie, mm-hmm. you know, but he wasn't he wasn't the primary. I yeah. thought I thought Buffalo Bill was interesting, yeah. you know. So yeah, for sure, uh, the other one he he also was a uh, was a caddy and uh, was it was in from a uh, 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 Cape Fear, 
the De Niro Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good film, yeah. Yeah, and that's I a like good yeah. bad guy. He's a very good bad guy. Yeah, when, when, I, uh, when, I, when, he, when I saw that, because he just texted me out of the blue on that. I was like, oh, my yeah. gosh, he's listening to my podcast. <laughs> and, uh, and I was Thank like. Thank you for that. Yeah, and, and uh, that one I would put on my list. Yeah, that I one agree. I definitely yeah. Now, Lecter, plus, he, he's kind of in that Darth Vader one where, yeah. you know, but, uh, but, uh, but that, uh, I think it is Caddy. I think it's like William. I can't remember. I should. should yeah, I don't remember. remember his name either. But, but, but I think I know his last name was was Caddy, and yeah. then uh, or Katie, C A D E Y, and right. then. Uh, but he was awesome. He was yeah. a, he was a, just so, you know, he he was the most lecherous. Yes. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. So do you have do you have any? Uh, and so there you go. So we've okay. had our first uh, first uh, feedback on a podcast, and yeah, that's good. Was, yeah. And so do you have any recommendations? I got a music recommendation. This okay. Week. Go yeah, ahead. and it is. Um, it's. I was, man, I was thinking about this the other day. Like all the stuff that we talk about is old. Sorry, right? I, I, no, that's not on purpose. It's just it stood the test of time. And this is a Colorado band called mm-hmm. Big Head Todd and the Monsters. Oh, okay. And the album, I think I've heard of Big Head Todd. Yeah, the album is called Sister Sweetly, and um, man, every single song is just awesome in my opinion. It's this, it's this really casual mix of rock country and reggae wow reggae yeah it's they got a lot of reggae rhythms and stuff in there but it's very much rock and roll guitar um <clears throat> the guy's voice is, is pretty unique okay um there's a song in there um every cowboy has a song to get him home mm-hmm. and and i just think that idea is super cool so nice. you know it's personalized every cowboy's got a some song that he sings in his head when he's what, driving cattle or whatever he's doing to get himself home or Anyway, so yeah, so uh, sister, nice. sister, sweetly by Big Head Todd and the Monsters. Nice, good, yeah. Um, my recommendation going in a completely different direction, and I don't know what this is, but I would invite <laughs> everybody out there to research this. Is uh, James giving you homework? Yeah, well, it's worth it. Is uh, there's this kind of phenomenon I've, I've I've kind of seen a lot on on YouTube, and there's a a thing called the back rooms. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of this? Um, no, but the gimp is the first thing that came to my mind. No, so so <laughs> there there is a there is kind of a this this YouTube internet phenomenon where where individuals can can clip out right and with, with that you know like in a video game where sometimes you know you may be especially in the older video games you may be you know running through a a zone and suddenly you fall through the the mm-hmm. environment you end up kind of between environments. Right. Well, uh, there's there's uh, you know, there's maybe on Reddit or something like that. Somebody wrote a story about, or, or came up with this concept of, uh, and, and it and it's based on uh, liminal spacing or liminal spaces. And liminal spaces are, are you know, photos that that are kind of kind of in that uncanny valley. It may be like an office building or an office space with no furniture in it that's got kind of kind of uh, you know that kind of fluorescent lighting and dirty carpet Mm -hmm. and it's familiar but it's not familiar right or maybe it's a picture of an apartment building or empty mall or something like that and so it's it's familiar but also uncomfortable right okay liminal spaces so 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 somebody wrote and, and there was a picture of a of an empty office building with really you know obviously everything was on 90 degrees but kind of weird walls yellow wallpaper fluorescent lights dirty yellow carpet somebody put a picture in there uh uh put a picture and then somebody wrote this little short paragraph about the picture and it started to get like a mind of its own right and so there's all these you know uh, videos and stories and so forth that have been kind of written around about this clipping into the back rooms and what happens to you and why it is what it is and one thing i really like about it is we live in a world where uh, independent properties, you know, uh, you know, everybody's remaking, you know, movies and, and, uh, you know, and, and nobody has an original idea and this story, which is by the way, very eerie kind of, kind of, uh, kind of, you know, uh, kind of makes you feel creepy when you read about it or when you watch videos on it, it's got, a, it's, it's taken on a life of its own. So if you're, if you're interested in anything like that, if you go to YouTube, just Google back, back, uh, back rooms and, and uh, and there's a few people I've done like there's one and I tell you what I'll post uh, this I think his name's Kane uh, this web website or this YouTube channel is called Kane Pixel, and he's and he's uh, he's really I think he's kind of at the center of this and he's done a lot of short films mm-hmm. about it, and uh, they're really well done, like maybe seven or eight minutes about 
clipping into the back room and what happens when you're in there. Hmm. Uh, but and again, what I really like about it is, uh, is it's a novel concept, got a mind of its own, mm-hmm. you know, and, and people are kind of running with it, which is cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll check it out, but yeah. I, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense from your description, but sorry. I'm it, curious yeah, enough yeah. to look into it. Yeah. So again, what the back rooms are is a place where, well, like where people, uh, uh, disappear through reality and end up in a, a space, okay. you know, that's outside our dimension. Alternative dimension. Yes. Okay. And there's no escape. Once oh, there's no it. escape. Yeah. Once you're in it, you're in it. Yeah, see, I think I would have an escape. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> there's lots of videos about it. Yeah. So, and, oh, cool. and what, what makes it interesting is people is there's a, there's a group of people out there that are that are building building on it in kind of an intelligent way. You know what I mean? Okay. So, the, yeah. So, and that's I find it interesting that people are building on it because uh, generally, if you maybe this is sound going to sound pessimistic, but if you leave it to the the masses, it's it will get destroyed rather than uh-huh. built. Possibly, you know what I mean. Yeah, so so far so good though with it. All right, cool. so I mean, yeah, I agree. We'll see what happens. I yeah. agree. There's there there there's you know, if if there if it's done too organically, it kind of kind of becomes. Yeah. Do you uh, have you ever read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance? Of course. Yeah. yeah. He's he wrote that and then he wrote another book called Ly- Layla Layla huh. Lila something yeah. I can't remember, um, but he he um, Robert dang it. Percy Percy That's okay. it. Um, he had a concept in there about why. Um, Americanism and and we have this it, he believes that it came from the Indians but uh, we have this idea that you can't we we will root for you as you as you grow and become a star for example mm-hmm. you know you become more and more famous more and more popular and but then at some point you reach this point where you're too famous and too popular and then we crush you sure and uh, yeah. that's what I'm worried well, about. Some cool organic idea comes around, and right, some idiot's well, going to go in and drop our, a you know, like nuke what, or something. What, yeah. what does a Harvey Dent said? You know, you're you're everybody's hero until you become the villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. that's it exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, anyway, cool. yeah. Cool. Well, I was given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and so uh, if if anybody wants to hear us disagree, that that was there. We, there that, you go. That was pretty there disagreeable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, hey, we're gonna have an episode on the police. Damn it! Uh, uh, yeah, oh, <laughs> I'm not letting that die. <laughs> well, yeah, it'll happen. All right. Well, okay. all right. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Uh, again, this was Tony. I'm here with Doug, and uh, hope everybody has a great night. See you later. Bye. This has been an Analog Spectrum production and presentation. Doug and I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to spend some time with us. Knowing that you gave us a listen and supported our show really means a lot to us. I posted our podcast website in the description. If you get a chance, maybe head on over there and see if you'd like to download one of our previous programs. We talk about all sorts of stuff. There might be something we post in the past that you'll find interesting. And while you're there, please consider subscribing. That way you'll get notification of our future casts. Or if you prefer, you can search us out on just about any podcast platform there is. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Podbean, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Podchaser, and there's a few more. If you have a podcast app, we're probably on there. I almost forgot we're on YouTube now. That link is also in the description. We haven't gotten around to producing videos yet, but all of our recordings are on there. It would be super awesome if you'd consider following us on there, too. Finally, for any cast you have enjoyed, please leave us a review and a comment. Five stars if you don't mind. Once you're done singing our praises, please share our show with your friends and family. With your help, we'll keep growing our Analog Spectrum community. That's all I have for now. Please feel free to contact us at analogspectrum at gmail.com if you have any questions or if you just want to say hello. As always, thanks for joining us on this ride, and we look forward to hanging out with you again sometime very soon. Bye.